stay that way, honey, because they're in charge of it. I know a place that's really cool. It's up higher than any school. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Grab a jet pack and some fuel, because we're going up high, high in the sky. Come on up for a ride with your good friends at your side. Imagination is your guide, because it's Dr. Sparks. Science story typewriting time. Hello, everyone. My name is Dr. Sparks, and I'm here today to write a bunch of stories on my typewriter. You can see I collect them. There's one here, and here, and here. And these typewriters, you can press the keys in any number of ways in order to type any sort of story. Today, I'm here with Henry, and Henry is helping me write a story right now about a tree that is losing all of its apples. Now, I'm here today as part of Family Maker Camp, and there's a whole bunch of other events happening this week and throughout the rest of the month. You can find out all about the other stuff that's happening at familymakercamp.com, or excuse me, makercamp.com slash events is the link right there. If you are interested, if you're watching at home right now on any stream, if you leave a prompt in the comments, I can be sure to write that story uh, after we're done here today, or we might get to it later. So the story that I was asked to write by Henry is all about a pair of trees. Right now, the story we're working on has two trees. There's a uh, Mr. Tree who is walking around. He can talk. He's an anthropomorphic tree, which means he's kind of human-like. He can walk around. He can talk. And Mr. Tree has uprooted himself and gone walking, and he comes across an apple tree who is just dropping its apples everywhere. Now, the apple tree says, you've got to help me, Mr. Tr ap Mr. Tree. I'm dropping all my apples. And well, Mr. Tree has tons of branches, and so he helps catch some of the apples that have fallen to the ground, but still many more fall through his branches and leaves and land on the ground. The funny thing is though, after each apple hits the ground, they split open and a star emerges. And that's right where we are in the middle of the story right now. So Henry, what happens with these stars? Right now I've got that the stars are singing, but what are they singing? Okay, so they're singing, um, they're singing like an angel. <laughs> <laughs> the stars sing a chorus, each one sounding as beautiful as an angel. Sounding, each one sounding as beautiful as an angel. And what, um, what are they singing? They're sounding beautiful, but is there a particular song or some reason that they're singing? Uh, no. Uh, they're just, and they're flying up into the sky. Ah, that's perfect. The star sang a chorus, each one sounding as beautiful. Oh, that's why. <laughs> as beautiful uh, as an angel. And they flew high up into the sky. Now, what happens with our trees now? Do you think Mr. Tree is astonished that these stars are flying away like that? No, um, and then the, and then one of the apples stays whole, and then um, in I mean, one of the apples cracks, and what's different about that apple is um, there's a circle, I mean, a big circle inside of the apple. Oh, okay. One of the apples had remained whole. Oh, I misspelled whole. <laughs> had remained whole. And the star inside that apple, what did the star inside that apple do? Um, no, um, oh. it changed into a, um, changed into a um, circle. One of the apples had remained whole and it changed into a circle. Okay. And then that apple flew into the sky 
as a circle. And that apple flew, or that circle flew into the sky. And do you think, um, so if the stars have returned to the sky, does the circle that goes to the sky, does that become the moon maybe or something like that? Yeah. And then, uh -huh, yes. and then it turns into nighttime. And it turns into nighttime. Perfect. Okay. Uh, that apple flew into the sky and became the moon. It was suddenly, suddenly night time. And do you think the two trees look back up at the stars and have something to say? Yeah. They say, um, what's going on with my apples? And the two trees looked up to the sky and marveled at what had become of the apples. Okay. Now, do you think, um, do they try to get the apples back? Or this could actually be a pretty good end to this story right now as well. What we've done here is we've got these two trees and the, they have this incredible, crazy thing happen to them. And they've just somehow made it become nighttime as the circle inside the one apple becomes the moon. Is that the end of the story or does it continue? It continues. Okay. And what happens is that um, um, a kid comes out of their bed because um, um, it was morning. Uh huh. Because the trees were in the the kid's backyard. What was the kid's name? The it kid. Could be the kid's name was. <laughs> okay. Okay. Cats was the kid who lived next door. Mm -hmm. Next door. <clears throat> and uh, is Cats a boy or a girl? Uh, she's a girl. And she had been woken up by the sound of stars bursting from apples. Yeah. Uh, she leapt to her window. And what does she do? Um, and she w and she has a wiggly tooth, and she wiggles her tooth. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay, she leapt to her window and wiggled her wiggly tooth. Now, I'm thinking that her wiggly tooth should also have a star inside of it. No, um, it turned into, uh, um, it turned into a, uh, butterfly. A butterfly, okay. <laughs> she leapt to her window and wiggled her wiggly tooth. The tooth transformed into a butterfly. And uh, flew up into the sky? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Following the stars? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> all right. That's pretty crazy. All right. Can we tie this all back together now? Can we make the story, like, feel like it has an ending now? Yeah. And then um, she loses her second tooth and then okay. um, and then um it transforms into another fruit <laughs> okay what what kind of fruit does it transform into it transforms into oranges <laughs> all right uh cats lost a second tooth which quickly transformed into an orange. And do you think the seeds fall into the ground and another tree grows there? No. Um, the orange um, flies up into the tree and then, but by then the 
apple tree already lost all of its um, apples. Okay. The orange flew up into, into apple tree. The now empty apple tree and made its home in the apple tree? No. And then um, it lost its seeds into the tree and then it turned into an orange tree. <laughs> okay, the orange transforms the apple tree into an orange tree? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, cats lost the second tooth, which quickly transformed into an orange. The orange flew up into the now empty apple tree and transformed and uh, transformed the apple tree into an orange tree. Now, I think we should go back to Mr. Tree, Mr. Tree now, our original character. So what does he think of his friend suddenly being transformed into uh, an orange tree? And then they were like, okay, I guess I'm going to um, keep my apples and put them in my, my head so I'm an apple tree. And then <laughs> Mr. Tree turned into an apple tree. Okay, okay. So now the uh, orange tree, the apple tree has been transformed into an orange tree. Mr. Tree, seeing... An opportunity picked, uh, took the apples he was holding and placed them in his branches. Now he was an apple tree and um, and then, um and then they were both, um, one of them was an apple tree and one of them was an orange tree. <laughs> and together, the orange tree and the apple tree were the best of friends. Yeah. Um... How about, can we end with them, like, having a picnic under the star-filled sky? No, it's, um, and then Cats woke up, and then it was a dream. <laughs> okay, it was all a dream. <laughs> Cats woke up. It was all a dream. The trees were... Uh, Mr. and Apple, respectively. No, <laughs> How no, about no. the trees? No. And then she was like, um, but she saw the normal stars in the sky. Um, and, the, and then, but the trees were actually still, um, still the same trees they were in her dream. Okay. Um, it was all a dream. The trees... <clears throat> We're outside, and the stars were not apples, not apple born. <clears throat> but when she looked closer at the trees, one was an apple, and one was an orange and i think that is the end because we're actually out of space <laughs> that's the end of the page the end <laughs> perfect perfect timing i think all right henry that story was amazing uh but the one thing it needs is it still needs a title so what i would like to do is read you the entire story back to you and then you can tell me what the title should be and then we'll look at the illustration that cecilia has done and kind of uh talk about that as well what do you think? Can I read this to you? Yeah. Okay, here we go. Mr. Tree was a tree. A tree who could walk and talk. And Mr. Tree found an apple tree who could also walk and talk. The apple tree was dropping apples left and right. Oh my, said the apple tree. I'm dropping apples all over the place. Here, let me help you, said Mr. Tree. And Mr. Tree cut all the apples that had fallen 
and they split open as he touched them. And inside each apple was a star. The stars sang a chorus. Each one sounded as beautiful as an angel. And they soared one by one, flying up into the sky, peppering the sky. One of the apples had remained whole, and it changed into a circle. And that apple also followed its brothers up into the sky and became the moon. It was suddenly nighttime with the moon in the sky. And the two trees looked up at the sky and marveled at what had become of the apple tree's apples. At that very moment, Cats, the kid who lived next door to the apple tree, was woken up by the sound of bursting apples and stars flying into the sky. She leapt to her window and looked at the stars, and she wiggled her lucky tooth, which was loose in her mouth. The tooth snapped out of her mouth and became a butterfly and flew up into the sky, following the stars. After something like that, she reached into her mouth for her other loose tooth and snapped that tooth off, and it transformed into an orange. And the orange flew up into the now, now empty apple tree. And it transformed the apple tree into an orange tree. Now, Mr. Tree, during all of this, saw an opportunity. He took the apples he was holding and he placed them in his own branches. And he transformed himself into an apple tree. And now, Mr. Tree, who was now an apple tree, and the apple tree, who was now an orange tree, were the best of friends. And they sat beneath the stars that they had peppered into the sky. Cats woke up. It had all been a dream. The trees were outside. They weren't walking around. The stars in the sky above looked very normal. They did not look like they had been snapped out of apples. But when she looked closer at the two trees in her yard, well, the one she called Mr. Tree wasn't where it had been the night before. And don't you know, it had apples in its branches. And the other tree was an orange tree. The end. That was a great story! What's that story called? It's called... The Interesting Night. <laughs> that is a great title for that story. It certainly would be interesting. If, I, if my teeth started falling out and transforming into random objects, I would think it was a very interesting night. <laughs> have you ever lost a tooth, Henry? No, but I have a super wiggly one. Oh, geez. Do you think when you lose it, will it become a butterfly? I don't know. It's certainly a possibility. Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay. The Interesting Night, right? That's the title? Yeah. The Interesting Night. Now, while we were typing this story and while I was reading it back to you, Cecilia has been hard at work coming up with an illustration for this story. And I think we should take a look at this. Oh, wow. Well, look at that. Henry, can you tell us what, what you see here? Can you describe this picture for us? Uh-huh. So, um, um, the um, tree has, I think I know what scene in the, um, in the story it is. It's when, um, it's when the stars come in the sky and the butterfly and the or and the butterfly comes out of um cat's mouth. Yeah. It's such a great drawing, huh? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. All right. Well, with that, would you like to come up with another story? We've got time for one more if you're game. Okay. All right, let's make another story. And actually, before we do that, um, so the story that I wrote for you today and the illustration that Cecilia made for you as well, we're going to mail them to you. So I actually have um, an envelope here with your name on it, and uh, I'm going to put a stamp on it and put the story inside of it, and we're going we're gonna to mail it to you. Now, you've got some choices. Would you like a Sesame Street stamp or would you like an astronaut stamp? Not stamp. Oh yeah, good choice. <laughs> okay. I got your stamp right there. 
And I got your story folded up into thirds carefully. And then we will add Cecilia's illustration. And then I'm going to throw it into a mailbox over here. And then we're going to have... It's going to go into the mail truck and... <laughs> the mail truck will carry your letter all the way to you. All right. Well, let's give you another story, though. Um, let's have this one be different. Let's not have this one be about a tree. What else would you like to have a story about this time? It's about um, a table lamp. A table lamp? Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Okay. Uh, does this table lamp have a name? Yeah. Okay. And give me... I need to know a little bit about this table lamp before we start the story. A lot of stories have, we meet a character and the character has a problem. And then over the course of the story, that problem either gets fixed or something changes about their, about their life. So can we give this table lamp a problem, do you think? Yeah. Okay. Table lamp's problem. We need a table lamp, we need a name, and we need a problem. Uh, the table lamp's name is Lampy. <laughs> Lampy, the table lamp, okay. And um, it has a problem, which is it has a block of slime on its head, which is trying to um, bother Lampy. And the um, slime block's name is Slimey. Okay, cool. All right, so Lampy, the lamp. Lived on a table and <clears throat> provided light for whoever was using the table. Uh, type where it got stuck, there we go. Provided light for whoever was using the table. But Lampy had a problem. And the problem was The big block of slime slime that lived on his head. Okay, now I'm thinking that Lampy's gonna have a talk with Slimy, but to do this, what do you think their voices sound like? What's Lampy's voice sound like? Hello. And Hello. And every time. Lampy talks, um, his light turns on. <laughs> okay. So every time, um, so, and the only way to turn on Lampy's light is to make him talk. So you have to talk to Lampy while you're doing something. <laughs> and Lampy. Um, <laughs> uh, okay. Um, okay. So Lampy, um, is talking, um, and he says, hello. And every time he talks, he flickers on and off, right? Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Um, hello. Said Lampy. Flickering. On and off. Do you think you could get off? of my head. Now, I'm thinking that Slimy, who has a very slimy, disgusting voice, says, I am not going to get off of your head, not for all the money in the world. Do you think, is that what Slimy sounds like? Yeah. Okay, cool. I wouldn't get off your head. Get off your head. For all the money in the world, he growled. Now, this was a problem, I'm thinking. Um, Lampy does not like having slime on his head. Yeah. Um, Lampy tried everything he could think of. to get the slime off his head. What do you think he might do? 
Um, so he tried to um, he tried to wiggle off. Okay. <laughs> He tried to wiggle it off his head, but the slime was stuck too sticky. But the uh, but the slime was much too sticky. Okay. Um, what else does he try? I think he should try three things. And then he tried um, turning on and off like 100 times. <laughs> he tried turning on and off 100 times but it didn't work and then they tried going faster than each other by lampy was trying to flicker on and off as fast as he can but slimy was trying to go run as fast as he can and that didn't work okay uh lampy tried to run as fast as he could, but that didn't work. Okay, I'm thinking I have an idea for how Lampy gets the slime off his head. What? What do you think about Lampy is so exhausted, he just sits there and doesn't even turn off. He's so tired, he just sits there. And then his head gets hotter and hotter the longer the light bulb is on. And at some point, the slime is so hot, it's forced to run away. What? I have an idea for um, you can um, like um, a kid named um, a kid named Henry <laughs> um, <laughs> um, walks in and wants to um, work at the desk on his homework. Uh, at that moment, a kid named Henry came to the desk where Lampy was uh, trying to run and sat down. And do you think that Henry just flicks the slime off? No. Um, um, he sees that um, it would look interesting to play with Slimy. So he plays with Slimy and then he throws him in the garbage because his hands are all yucky and gooey. Okay. Henry thought it would be interesting to play with Slimy. So she took Slimy off the lamp and threw her in the garbage. Yeah. <clears throat> and how about, um, and Henry thought that the light that Lampy gave was the best light Lampy had ever shined. Yeah. <laughs> okay. And Henry thought that the light that Lampy gave was the best light he'd ever shown. The end. Okay. Now, once again, we need a title for this story. So do you think that um, I can read it back to you one more time with the voices and everything? And yeah. Try? Okay. Lampy the lamp lived on a table and provided light for whoever was using the table. But Lampy had a problem. And the problem was that the big block of slime lived on his head. <laughs> Hello, said Lampy in his lamp voice, flickering on and off. Do you think you could get off of my head? I wouldn't get off of your head for all the money in the world, growled Slimy the slime ball. Lampy tried everything he could think of to get the slime off his head. He tried to wiggle it off of his head. Oh, but that slime was much too sticky. And then he tried to, uh, turning off, on and off, 100 times. Flicker, 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 flicker. Flick, 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 flick. But that didn't do a thing. And now he was very tired and no further to getting the slime off his head. The last thing Lampy tried 
Lamy tried running just as fast as he possibly could. But man, that slime was stuck on there good. And the running didn't work either. Now, as Lampy was running back and forth in circles across the deck, desk, a kid named Henry came into the room. And Henry saw the lamp running and sat down at the desk. The lamp stopped running. And Henry saw the slime that was sitting on its head and thought that it'd be fun to play with that slime. So Henry pulled it off and it stretched like silly putty all the way out. And he pulled and he pulled and he pulled until at last he pulled the last bit of slime off of the lamp. And then, Henry was already bored and threw it in the garbage. Now, Henry thought as he sat there that the lamp that Lampy gave off, the light that Lampy gave off, was the best illumination she had ever done. The end. What do you think? What's that story called? Mean slimy. Mean slimy? Mean slimy. Mean slimy. Mean slimy. <laughs> that is a great story. All right, let's look at what Cecilia's got. <laughs> Henry, what's happening in this story? You got to give us <laughs> a description here. Um. Henry sees Slimy and he thinks it would be fun to play with Slimy. <laughs> <laughs> that is such a great drawing. Cecilia is amazing. <laughs> I don't know. Henry, what do you think of that drawing? Is it pretty good? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you so much, Henry. And everybody who's watching at home, thank you so much for tuning in to the typewriter stories today. Uh, we're at a half an hour, do you think? Oh, we're at 30 minutes? Okay. Um, uh, thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, so for next week, we will be having another session at exactly this same time. So at 4 o'clock Eastern time uh, on Mondays and also 1 o'clock uh, Pacific time on Mondays, um, you can tune in. If you are interested, we will share any story you share with us. So if you record yourself telling a story, um, we will uh, put that video in our live stream and share it with everybody that's watching this video. The prompt for this week is the same prompt as last week. It's a really fun one. Um, share your story with us. It's, uh, you can email a video, a picture, or the text of your story to booking at Dr. Sparks show. Uh, and the prompt this week is, there was a mermaid under the sink. If you enjoy the typewriter stories, you're welcome to bring me to your classroom. Please reach out and we'd love to do this with your classroom um, and have, write some stories for you as well. Once again, I'd like to thank Family Maker Camp for uh, letting us write this, uh, do this. And if you leave a prompt in the comments, uh, give me something to work with and I will write a story and I will uh, share it in the comments as well. So thanks guys. I'm Dr. Sparks. <laughs>